H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. OBJ For each object M in marks, I have to write, I have to write here uh, convert dot to int 32 okay now let me run this so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now I'm seeing printing okay so I'm seeing some questions so what if it is string in object uh, in our okay 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 so so is it clear now how to how to declare a collection and uh, how to add values using a for loop to collection and how to print the values from the collection so instead of using for each loop we can even use a for loop okay but when you're using for loop see in a collection in a collection if I want to use a for loop so I need to write like this for for int i for int i is equal to 0 i less than marks dot length marks dot count will be there marks dot count i need to put i plus plus so when you are using collections you have a method called count so count will you give you the number of elements inside this marks so for now the count value will be 10 after this step because you are adding 10 elements into the marks so so you don't need to put 10 here uh, when you use marks dot count it will take care now you can write here you can write here console dot console dot write line you can actually put here marks of marks of i marks of i okay that will print the values okay so maybe you might need to put const convert dot to in okay so I, I got another question marks dot length will not work for collections so we need to give marks dot count it is not marks dot length for strings you can give length but here it is telling the count of variables it is not length for strings you can give length for example for example if I if I declare string 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 name is equal to Meghnath now now if i want to print the value console dot write line i can put name dot length okay so for strings you can use dot length but for collections if you want to know the size of collection you have to use dot count okay okay so okay so for arrays I don't think we will use count or length for arrays so let's type let's verify that uh, I'm going to write I'm going to declare an array int uh, int marks so let me declare an array int abc is equal to new int of new int of say five characters now abc dot count yeah I have count so but we don't have length actually so yeah we have length so for arrays we are using length for collections we are using count okay so a array dot length will give you the represents total number of elements in the dimensions of array okay you're right uh, Sandhya you're right for arrays we'll be using length but for collections what we are using what is the method we are using to find number of elements for collection yeah from all of you okay so anyway if we are seeing like this even I will summarize it so that things will be clear for you so 
so in future when you are using collections what is the data type you use i mean what is the what do you use for loop or for each loop okay okay so now i'll ask rapid fire questions so you need to answer uh, you need to answer me for the topics which we discussed today so i need to see the response from all of you please respond please respond i need to see the response from all of you okay so now windows are notepad so now uh you need to tell me just true or false okay so i need to see the response from bavik and jesse as well so yeah okay let's get started so for collections uh, the each element will be an object true or false true yeah okay right now for collections are not type safe true yeah so it is true now uh okay so when you are using uh, collections you need to do boxing and unboxing frequently yes so this is also true this is also true okay now uh when you are declaring an array you need not mention the size of the array yeah it is false because you have to mention the size of array while declaring okay so for finding length of an array we use name of the array dot count yeah for array what is that we use we use for array we use dot length okay for collections we use dot count dot count method okay now next question so for collections we can access the elements using index i repeat the question for collections if i want to if i want to take for example first element i can can i put marks of 0 using index can i do it for collections marks of 0 not for adding the elements for for retrieving the values see for example i have a collections called marks which is having two elements uh, say 95 and 60 so now if i want to print the first element in the collection marks can i put marks of 0 yes we can do that we can do that as marks of 0 so that's what we so maybe my question is not clear so i was asking can you uh, if you want to print elements of this marks so can you do uh, we are doing like that only marks of 0 okay marks of 0 marks of 1 marks of 2 like that we are printing okay but still yeah you're right even while printing this is not required but when you want to assign for an integer you have to do while printing even if you let's try to remove this let's try to remove this and then see the difference so so now where do i have i have this let me remove all this so let's see whether it will print or not for printing i believe i mean i have never tried this but for printing you can give like this but when you want to assign this to some integer value it will throw error because it's an object so so let's run this 1 2 3 4 5 6 see it is printing so for printing the values you can just put marks of uh, marks of i but when you try to assign this to integer for example you want to do sum of values okay so inside this for loop if you want to do sum so here i can just put if i put here int sum is equal to 0 in that case i cannot do if i put sum is equal to sum plus marks of 0 it will throw error because because this sum is of integer type this marks of 0 is object type but when you are printing console dot write line you can just put marks of 0 okay so when you are using uh, when you are try to when you try to assign this to an integer you cannot do it okay anyway so what is the collection we saw till now what is the collection uh, class name which we discussed till now collection class which we discussed so far is array list okay so we have seen one collection which is array list 
and how do we add the elements to it we add using dot add and how do we retrieve the elements we retrieve the elements using index now let's try to understand uh, the other collections which we have so we have something called stack stack yes is equal to new stack okay so I'll just declare I'll just tell you what is a stack stack is also collection uh, if you don't know whether this is collection or not you can move the mouse on it you can see that you can see here that system dot collections we have stack okay so stack is something like uh, stack is something like you have a container so it follows the algorithm like this so for example you have a container okay so you have a cylindrical container and you have put here coins so this is one uh, one coin coin number one coin number two and coin number three coin number three and coin number four so now this is a container you added four coins of number one two three four so the first coin which you added inside this is which coin the first coin which you would have entered into this uh, dropped into the container is uh, the what is the coin number which you dropped first it will be the coin number one so I mean I mean physically physically the coin is one which I dropped it first now when I'm taking off when I'm removing this uh, coins the which coin will come out first coin number four will come out first so for a stack for a stack the algorithm which is followed is for algorithm which is followed is last in last in first out okay so I'll explain I'll explain a bit uh, then you will understand but still this is the algorithm for last in first out last in first out is something like the last element which you added inside is coming out first that type of algorithm we call it as last in first out so now let's try to add elements here so for adding elements into a stack we use s dot push we don't have s dot add like how we have array list dot add s dot add we don't have in an array I repeat in an array list if you want to add the elements you have to use the method called dot add but in a stack if you want to add the elements you have to use yes dot push so I need to add 97 and here again s yes dot push I need to add 88 okay now if you want to retrieve the elements from a stack again you have to see here console dot write line for example if I want to retrieve the element I need to use s yes dot pop and here again I need to use console dot write line yes dot pop now see now see the tricky part so I have added s dot push 97 and s dot push 88 now what is the first element that would have popped out here can you guess the output of this no it is not 97 I already told uh, stack follows the algorithm called last in first out so so if you see here if you see here this is the container the first I have added into container which is 97 and I have other now I have added 88 here so now now when I execute this when I use s dot pop th this comes out so the answer is 88 and when I use this dot pop again the answer is 97 okay so the output for this program is the output for this program is 88 comma 97 be very careful I went to one written test okay I went to one written test they have written this small piece of code and they asked me what is output the first option is 97 comma 88 okay so it is not 97 comma 88 when you execute this you can see the output it is 88 comma 97 okay so what okay so let me ask questions so what is the algorithm which is followed for stack Out. yes correct last in first out and how do you add elements for a stack what is the method yes not push. dot push yeah and for retrieving the elements we use dot pop okay now one more question which I tell uh, which I have seen in the in, in the question especially when you are taking certifications on C sharp or something so they have written like this console dot right line they have written s dot pop okay so uh, so 
when we have three types three pops so that means already one element is came here came out is 90 uh, came out is uh, 88 and this pop would have removed 97 so when these two are done the stack is empty so they have given a code like this and they are asking what uh, which line will throw error so you should tell that this is the line which throws the error it will throw the error saying like saying like uh, you are trying to remove one more element which is not there you will get an error, error saying stack is empty so let's run this so that is the reason why I am covering all these things so please uh, if you are not getting anything please tell me I will explain again but you should know all these things ok so so what is error here so system dot invalid operation exception because uh, it is not valid because you already the already the stack is empty but you are trying to pop another element which is not possible so stack is empty ok so now so this is uh, this is one type of collection so I have used in 8 years I have used this only once where I have to use an algorithm uh, last in first out but we don't use it we don't use this very frequently ok so we don't use it very frequently but still keep it in mind that uh, uh, we have a collection called stack ok now now we have one more thing one more collection called Q so Q uh, Q uh, OBJ is equal to new Q so I don't want to tell the algorithm which it follows you should be knowing already normal Q's in real life what is the algorithm which follows in real life Q's out. Perfect, perfect. So, so that is the same algorithm which we follow for C sharp Q as well. It is, it is first in, first out, first in, first out. So when you move the, so now the methods for Q object Q is not push and pop. For object we have object dot n Q, object dot n Q ninety seven, and here object dot n Q we have eighty eight. Now, when you are printing this console dot uh, console dot write line, you have to put here obj dot dq. Okay, so so again we have console dot write line, we have obj dot dq. Okay, so this is how this is what we follow. Uh, this is the methods which we have for a queue. And what is the output now? When I run this code, what is the output? All of you ping me in the chat window. What is the output? yeah it is 90 yeah it is 97 and 88 because Q follows first in first out algorithm okay so let me execute this you can see that the output is 97 comma 88 okay so what are the three collections we discussed so far All of you, please answer me. What are the three collections we discussed? Array, match, and queue. Uh, it is not array. What is it? Uh, array list. Yeah, actually. yeah, correct, correct. Okay. So we have seen about three collections: uh, array list, stack, and queue. For stack, we have methods called push and pop. For queue, we have methods called nq and dq and for array list we have to use dot add and uh, and uh, the namespace which we use for all the collections is system dot collections now th the biggest disadvantage of using collections is they are not type safe the disadvantage of using collections is they are not type safe and uh, you have to when you try to assign values to normal value types you have to do typecast uh, which is not performance wise which is not good and uh, and the advantage of collections or arrays is you need not mention the size uh, while declaring that is one advantage okay now there are so many methods for array list uh, maybe we'll discuss later now let's try to see the advantage of using collections uh, using generics let's try to understand what is generic so all of you have some some time back all of you asked me what is this system dot collections dot generic okay so now and the one more advantage of using uh, using collections is uh, using collections than arrays is now for example i have array list array list marks 
is equal to new array list okay so now if I want to add I'm adding max dot add of 95 okay and then we have max dot add of 197 okay so now if I want to add uh, so this 95 and 97 are storing this way so are storing in this way so here it will be 95 here it will be 97 now if I want to 95 here and 97 here now if I want to add an element in between them okay in between them by mistake I have added third subject mark in the second subject so actually 97 is a third subject mark by but I have added in the second subject by mistake so now we have different methods in collections so you can actually use marks dot insert you can do in insert so so here what you can do is you need to provide the index so array list or arrays the index starts from 0 now if I want to insert the subject for second subject what will be the index the index for the second subject will be 1 so so I need to put 1 here and comma I need to put the value which is say for example the second subject which I wanted is 78 okay so this is how you need to insert now if I use a for each loop for each uh, for each uh, for each obj object m in marks so if you put here console dot right line m so now the output will be the output will be 95 78 and 97 because I have inserted one I have inter inserted 78 at index one this 97 will come down so 95 78 and 97 is the answer so if I execute this you can see that the answer is 95 78 and 71 so someone sometime back asked me the question what if I want to add element in the middle so this is how you have to add this is for collection but for array you cannot do it if you want to insert uh, for an array you don't have any specific method you have to move all the all of this down okay so okay so system dot collections of generic we have not used it but it, it it automatically came when you create a project so what visual studio has done is uh, when you create a new project by by default they are adding these four collections see now see when I create a new project so I'm opening Visual Studio 2013 and I'm going to go here file file a new project I'm going to select I'm going to select a console application when I select a console application we see that by default you will see four namespaces system system dot collections dot generic system dot link you system dot text okay so we are seeing four collections by default so anyway so let's try to understand there are so many collections uh, not only array list stack and queue there are some more uh, I'll, I'll give the list later but uh, take it as a homework or take it as an assignment you have to do some research and tell me what are the other collections we have okay so today for sure I mean I thought of sending assignment but uh, we'll have a short exam again uh, so let me show you what are uh, I thought of I don't know yesterday okay so let me see the responses from the marks so I'll show I'll show you how many of you have taken the exam okay so most of you have taken the exam good well and good so so let me explain the answers for this and then we will stop here okay so let me go back to this one and let me go to this okay okay so now so um, we'll discuss on this so anyway in the meantime do you have any questions for do you have any questions for me for uh, for collections if you don't have any questions Yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can, because 
yeah here. yeah yeah we can add because what is the type we are adding there what is the see for example uh, good question so here the question is can we add strings for stack and heap yes we can we can add it. for example if I put stack stack yes is equal to new stack uh, so here yes dot push when you see here it's an object so it's an object it's not an integer so because it's an object it can hold any type of data so even I can put here make that okay so now when I put s dot push if I put here Ravi so now when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing console dot write line yes dot pop so the first name which will come out is Ravi and console dot write line yes dot pop so the second name which comes out is Meghnath so let me run this so we can add any type of data because because collections use collections or like group of collection of objects collections are like collection of objects so an object can hold any type of data okay is it clear now yeah okay so now we'll go back to this exam and we'll see the answers so C sharp is case sense two. it is true 5 right shift 2 I don't need to explain this uh, 3 zor 7 I don't need to explain this range of byte minus 128 to 127 can we compile C sharp program without visual studio yes we can do it using C sharp compiler the system name for float data type is system dot single and using do while loop the statements inside uh, will be executed at least once irrespective of the condition is true or false yes uh, we got this explanation very clearly from so yeah what is the range for byte but when I said minus 128 to 107 no one has pinged me yeah, I was trying to do that. okay okay I, I got one message from Sandhya uh, it is actually I purposefully said that wrong I thought I'll get some responses just to see uh, the attention here so yeah thank you Sandhya for uh, for the message yeah okay so uh, system name for float data type is system dot single do while the statements inside will be executed at least once irrespective of the condition is true or false yes uh, what is the output for this j is equal to plus plus i this is called pre increment so the output will be 21 and 21 yeah so answer is none of this okay so now what is the answer for this for i equal to 1 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus console dot write line console dot write i so this is the question which I saw most of you have answered wrong only few has answered correct so so the answer for this is 6 the answer for this is 6 because because I have a semicolon here I have a semicolon here for the for loop when I have a semicolon for a for loop it will execute here itself it will not so it will not consider that right line console dot right is present is present inside this okay so okay so it will loop through and one more small correction here is this int i int is not here i i should have put here int i okay i should have kept like this int i i should have declared above for loop and for for i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus i have a semicolon here when you have a semicolon for for loop uh, the system or C sharp compiler will assume that the loop has ended here and this statement write console dot write will be printed i value i value when i value is 6 it will come outside for loop so here the output will be 6 so when I went for okay okay so ideally uh, I should have declared this int i above for loop so that is uh, my mistake so for example let's take here so here if I type here int uh, int i okay here I am writing here for i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to uh, 5 i plus plus okay so here I'm writing here console dot right line uh, console dot right line I'm putting I so let's see the answer okay so now when I run this you can see the answer is 6 
but but if you don't have the semicolon all of you are right the answers which you have given is right it will be 1 to 5 so run this 1 2 3 4 5 so so that is the reason why I added I went to one exam so so they gave this uh, what is output even I have kept 1 2 3 4 5 I thought all these are very small easy questions but when it came out the score was less than what I have expected so you need to be very cautious especially when you are writing some exam in C sharp semicolons matter a lot okay so now because uh, declared inside 6 should not be displayed right uh, no uh, okay so one more question here so when you declare uh, when you declare a variable here int i we declare like this int the scope of this variable int is inside this for loop so now I declare like this the scope of this variable for example if I come out here and if I type here console dot right line i it will throw error so so how many statements are there inside this for loop now how many statements are there inside this for loop now question how many statements are there inside this for loop now in this code I repeat the question again how many statements are there inside this for loop now so okay don't worry about these three okay you need not worry about this I am asking about uh, here inside this for loop so do you think uh, do you think this console dot right line will come under for loop this one will not come under the for loop see when you when you don't put flower brackets it will assume that only one statement is one statement belongs to this for loop but when you put a brackets here like this flower brackets and then you can write any number of statements so here uh, here uh, only one statement comes under for loop which is which is console or right line i so when you declare a variable inside this for loop like this int i so the scope of this i will be will be done here till here that's it after this it the system will not know about i okay so for that reason uh, for that reason if I put a semicolon here that means there are no statements below for loop so even this console dot right line I will not know that I because the scope of for loop has ended here with the semicolon so even this console dot right line I will not belongs to this for loop so so now I'll get an error saying like uh, I does not exist okay 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 so is it clear all of you what I mean to say now okay so when you declare any variable inside a for loop that scope of that variable will be only till that for loop when you come outside that for loop it will not know that uh, it will not know about the value which you declared okay so anyway so for this question I I'll, I think I'll give all of your right or something okay HTML tag to print moving text is mark you I'll explain that later cell padding is the distance between text and the border I'll explain this later this is also true so here what is the output what is the output for this yeah yeah so who is supposed to take the class on switch case let me see whether yeah so at least yeah Babita you are right it is actually none of this in C sharp you must have a break statement for a case if you have you must have break statement for a for a case in C sharp okay so anyway uh, I'll give chance for Babita to explain the next class okay for now we are already uh, running out of time what is output of code snippet it is none of this binary colon 15 I don't want to explain this ASCII value of capital letter Z you might have googled it for sure I don't need to tell that which of the following compiler is not part of .NET framework which is uh, uh, it is vcp.exe it, it is not a part of this now what is output for this int a is equal to uh, is it like f sorry uh, is it ssc um, is there something like that uh, yes so which is the full? FCS, FCS. Okay. So
so which is a which is a folder i said uh, we'll have csc.exe what is a folder while well, in the first class in the first class of c sharp or dotnet framework i told like if you want to verify whether dotnet framework is installed or not where do i need to see i need to go to start my computer c colon yeah windows where is it uh, c colon c colon yeah c colon windows windows c colon windows and then microsoft.net framework and i said version 4.0 inside this i told you need to check for so this is your uh, this is your c sharp compiler all of you know this okay and this is your what is this what is this compiler this compiler is for j sharp compiler and the one more we should have we should have for uh, vb so which is this one this is vb compiler so the answer for this question is uh, we have a j sharp okay okay so i think uh, i think this is wrong and also fsc also i don't think we have so i think that is also wrong okay so do we have fsc maybe cd yeah we don't have okay so whoever gave uh, one of that uh, both are correct answers okay now what is output of code in this code snippet 4 what is output for this int age equal to 10 and byte p is equal to age uh, yeah it will be compilation error because all the values which can be stored in age can you store all those in byte p i repeat the question all the values which you can store in integer can you store all those in byte we cannot store for that reason your c sharp compiler will throw an error saying like you cannot convert uh, explicitly like from integer to byte because you might lose some data uh, so here it's a compilation error okay so s byte can store negative values yes it is true signed byte so it can store negative values size of car in c sharp is 2 bytes value of 12 model of 15 is 12 we can create any number of objects for a class so we'll see that in the later sections which is true yes okay so this is about this so we'll have uh, i'll send this course for all of you uh, individually um, i'll not share here uh, okay so but i'll tell who got first mark i'll tell in the next class who got uh, highest mark okay. okay so as i said before i'll not consider uh, i'll not consider these two questions uh, which are I'll not consider this question because uh, this is wrong from my side and I'll also not consider HTML questions and I'll not consider the compiler so I'll remove four questions I'll score for 16 and let's see who would have got more okay so that's about today's topic I thought of completing generics so we are running out of time uh, generics we have to do and lambda expressions we have to do we have to do link queue so so far how much comfortable you are with the course 100%, 90%, 70%. Any suggestions for improvement? Feel feel free to uh, ping me, Bavik or Jesse or Padmini, all of you. So anything if you think that uh, I can improve, please suggest. Uh, exercises we are missing. Yeah, definitely I'll take this as a point. Other than that, um, the way we are going, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to drop a mail I will definitely try to incorporate from the next class so ok so yeah so after the class I don't remember everything so <laughs> so for that I cannot do anything so yeah yeah even some of the students say that uh, yeah I we should do uh, we should lo do lot of practice otherwise otherwise we cannot remember anything okay so yeah we have one topic called value and reference type so we'll discuss i see uh, two to three people have already some experience in c sharp uh, i can i can see that the way you're answering questions or the way so i can see that two to three people have some experience in c sharp okay so Okay.
yeah uh, yeah so um, very good book for C sharp yes I have very book good book even I got the book so I'll just tell you uh, it is illustrated C sharp this is very good book so um, yeah even I, I recommend this book to all all of you so okay so this is the best book which you can you can get for C sharp language okay so you can make a note of it uh, illustrated C sharp is the best book for learning C sharp okay so even it uh, try to get the latest one uh, which is uh, 2012 which has the features of C sharp 5.0 okay yeah yeah okay okay so okay so we'll stop here so Sandhya I'll answer your question in the next class okay okay so thank you very much thanks for joining happy weekend okay yeah so do we have class on Monday um, Monday e Monday yes we will have I guess even I'm not sure um, let's let me check so Mike you're there Mike or someone from H2K if they are there like uh, um, they are asking questions saying like do you have class on Monday okay okay we'll stop here uh, we are done with the session okay yeah bye for now uh, for schedule you can check with uh, you can check with H2K team okay so yeah thank you very much uh, we are done for today Bye. provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.